I'm just joining. Our new cadets report at the cadets mess at the top of the road, sir. Turn right, to the right. Thank you. What do you think you are, Mr. Barter? A comedian? No, sir. Then you don't see anything wrong with your hat? I can't see it. I'm wearing it. Then take it off, sir. Well? I had an accident on my way here. I fell off my motorcycle. Well, well, well. So you fell off your motorcycle. Then how do you expect to fly an aeroplane, sir? I expect to be taught, sir. <laughs> oh, another funny man. Well, what is your name, sir? Sanderson, Flight Sergeant. I bet you don't laugh so much from now on, Mr. Sanderson, sir. Gentlemen, move to the right in fours. Four, four. Right. By the left. Left wheel. Quick, back. As Douglas Bader marched across the parade ground at Cranwell on that September day in 1928, I marched beside him. Two young men for whom living meant flying. Douglas was airborne within a couple of days on his first instructional flight in an Avro 504. From the very beginning, he loved every minute of it. You must relax, you're still two tenths up. Now try another turn. Don't shove it, guide it. Guide it gently. You've got to feel the aeroplane part of you. That's better. I'm beginning to feel the plane now, sir. Never, never call it a plane, father. It's an aeroplane. Yes, sir. Now I want you to try a landing. Right? Okay, you've got her. Now turn in. again tomorrow. You mightn't be valuable to the Air Force, but I am. At all. Three in a row without terrifying me. Thank you. You've had six and a half hours fuel. You're nearly ready to go solo now. How do you feel about it? Fine, thank you, sir. Take off, fly a circuit, land, and then come in. I'll be watching. Very good, sir. trouble. You four gentlemen who passed me in the lane? No. no. And which of you owns the motorcycle? Me, Sergeant. Flight Cadet Bader. 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 Flight Cadet. 
same. The third time I've had you for cycling offences. And I suppose it's the third time you'll get us into trouble. You would never realize, sir. Well, I did have. Somebody must have put his fat foot through it. You're not going to pinch me for that, surely, Sergeant. It's either that or not being in proper control. Come, come, Sergeant. Don't be greedy. I'll take the no real light. Well, either spells trouble, sir. I'll come up and serve the summons tomorrow. <laughs> She's nice to feel I'm wanted anyway. <laughs> You're a menace to everybody on the road. Good night, officer. Good night. Good night. You came here a year ago on a prize cadetship, having passed in six. Since then, you've not only done no work, but you've spent your time breaking rules and apparently regarding authority as a challenge to be defied. Now, this latest escapade. Well, have you anything else to say? Well, sir, I, I, I think it must be some sort of reaction, sir. I've been working very hard for the exam. Oh. Well, you may be interested in the results of the examination, then. Yes, sir. There were 21 entries, and you were 19th. Oh. You've done well in flying, and you're good at games. You seem to think that's enough. It isn't. You'd better change considerably, or you'll go. We don't want schoolboys in the Royal Air Force, Barter. We want men. That's all. Yes, sir. How many does that make, Varda? Um, he's 102. It's a pity it's his last game for us. Four more and you've beaten him. Well done, Douglas. Thanks, John. Listen, the postings are up. What? Are we together? Yes, we're both going to Kenley. 23 Squadron. Uh -huh. Congratulations, Pilot Officer Varda. And the same to you, sir. Well done, Varda. Good innings. Thank you, sir. As you're both going to Kenley, I suppose they're going to keep all the trouble in one squad room. We'll liven things up. Half an hour ago, falling out of a row? Well, yes, sir. Actually, I didn't fall out of it, sir. I just sort of came out of it lower down, that's all. I must say they are a bit different from the game clock. Well, don't do it again without plenty of height. Yes, sir. And that applies to all of you. Don't do low aerobatics. Should be all right if you know your stuff, sir. Two pilots have killed themselves in the last month doing low aerobatics. They knew their stuff. It's all part of the game. They were just unlucky, that's all. Ever since you were chosen for the Hendon air display, you've been the worst defender of all. Better pilots than you have killed themselves for defying the rules. Well, surely we don't have to obey all the regulations all the time, sir. You know my views about some regulations. They're written for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. Yes, sir. So you've said frequently. Douglas. Sir? A really good pilot shouldn't have to prove it all the time, you know. I understand, sir. See you at the mess dance tonight. You bet, sir. Whenever I see you, you seem to be in a hurry. Why? When have you seen me hurry? Playing rugby for the Harlequins. I say, have I got a fan? <laughs> well, you are quite a celebrity. Douglas, when you finish making love to Sally, what are you up to on Monday? Making love to Sally, I hope. <laughs> Richardson and I are flying over to the Reading Aero Club. Care to join up? Yep, can't be in. Where do you live, Sally? Oh, about 40 miles away. Fine, I want you home. Let's go now. Don't be silly. What about Johnny? Besides, there's Hilda. They're all right. Look. I'll get my coat. Come on, let's go. I'll wait here for you. And very nice, too. Oh, hello, sir. <laughs> Enjoying yourself? Yes, rather. Good. 
I don't want to spoil your fun now, but I did mean what I said this afternoon. What about showing off? Oh, that's all right. I deserved it. It's dangerous in this job to be too sure of yourself. Just watch it. That's a good chap. I will, sir. Right. Good night, Douglas. Behave yourself. What does he mean, behave yourself? He's talking about Monday, not tonight. Must be some service boys here. They tell me this is going to be the standard flight of the Air Force. Terrifically fast, I believe. Ah, oh, hello, Joe. Just come in. Just flown in from Heston. Oh, by the way, have you met these RAF chaps? Anson, Richardson, Bardo? Uh, just been looking at your bulldog. Uh-huh. I saw you playing for inter-services. Rumor has it you'll be in the England team against the Springboks. Well, I may be lucky. Well, well, well. Quite the all-rounder. Rugger, cricket, boxing, Hendon. That was some show you and Dave put on at Hendon. Tricky Dave's a great pilot. We ought to be getting along. Thanks again for the tea. Why don't you beat up the field before you go? Not a chance, <laughs> old boy. They're getting rough with us below flying these days. Oh, come on, Bardo. Give us a show. You heard what Townes has said. We've been warned off the low stuff by the CEO. Oh. Come on, Douglas. We ought to get back. Sorry. These boys only perform under the crowd. Careful, we'll have you out in the moment. Can you get those parachutes? Please? Take it easy, Douglas. They won't be long. Oh, this is damn silly. Let me get up. No, hold on, over. Nice still. John, I can't feel my legs. Come in. Hello, sister. Mr. Joyce, would you have time to come and see a young Air Force officer who's just come in? He's had a very bad crash indeed. I have an appointment. The house surgeon's already seen him. He says there's very little hope. It's just a matter of time. Call Taylor. Tell him I'll be delayed. You only just caught him. Yes, it was lucky. This patient needs all the luck he can get. The pulse is stronger. Breathing's better. It's amazing he should be dead. He must be extremely fit. Let me look at the x-rays. Right leg, please. Left leg. Oh. Hello, you've had a bit of an accident. Don't worry, just lie back. We'll soon fix you up. Don't give me any anesthetic, Doc. I can't bear it, Doc. Don't worry, we'll see things are all right. Let's relax. Happy. the extent of his injury. Right leg's practically severed. Left leg's badly crushed. 
two ribs broken, but you know about that. Minor facial injuries. We'll have to work fast. He's lost a great deal of blood. I don't think we've got too much time. I got here as fast as I could. They're operating now. What about his mother? I telephoned her. She's in Yorkshire. She'll be here in the morning. What a hell of a mess. Well, I suppose a fellow like him either flies that way or doesn't fly at all. Oh, sister. What's happening? He's in the operating theater. Well, how is he? They're amputating his right leg. What a hell of a thing to happen to a man like Douglas. Excuse me, sister. Mr. Pardis' mother's here. Show her into the waiting room, will you? I'll see her in a minute. All right, nurse, you can take the dressings off now. What am I doing here? Oh, you're awake, are you? Of course I'm awake. Where am I? In hospital. You had an accident. Accident? You crashed in an airplane. Oh, what a bloody silly thing to do. This is Mr. Joyce. He operated on you. What did I do? Break a leg? You broke both of them. Huh. I suppose that sort of thing happens in an airplane crash. I'm very sorry, old chap. But I'm afraid we've had to take off the right leg. I hope I haven't been too much of a nuisance. Ready, sister. Now we'd better see how the other leg's getting along. This might hurt a little. I can't remember anything. Crash in an airplane. I broke both my legs. Ah! Well, uh, the dressing's off. Ah. Mm -hmm. Right. See you later, old chap. All right, nurse, you can redress the leg. Well, sir? I'd better have a word with the mother, I suppose. Well, she's in here. This is Mr. Joyce, the surgeon. I'm Bowler's uncle. This is his mother. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I'm glad to say that your son's come through the first operation very well. First operation? Yes, he must have another, I'm afraid. The other leg's badly infected. I'm sorry, but I must have your authority to amputate. No. No. But what's the alternative, Mr. Joyce? There is no alternative if he's to live. But he can't lose both legs, not both. If I operate at once, I think I can save the other below the knee. Well, couldn't we wait just a little while? I'm afraid not. It's his only chance, my dear. If you do it, are you sure you'll be able to save him? I can't be sure. He's very ill. But I would like to try. Excuse me. Give him my love. Yes, I will. Mr. Joyce will do everything possible. I'm so afraid that Douglas will hate me forever, but... Well, I couldn't let him die, could I? Of course not. Knowing the danger, Joyce did the second amputation at top speed, and they wheeled Father back to his room. Every ten minutes, day and night, they took his pulse. It was there, but only just. Douglas was like a man hanging on the edge of a precipice by his fingertips. The question was, would he have the strength when the anesthetic wore off to face the terrible weight of pain that was going to fall on him? Can't we give him some more morphia? He's had about as much as we dare give him. It doesn't seem to have any effect. He lay there, fighting, fighting, for two days and two nights. But there was no relief mm. and no defense until his body could stand no more. Then came the morning when the pain had left him. He felt warm and peaceful. He was, in fact, slipping away from life.
that moment, the pain started again. Williams home tomorrow. Very well, sir. How's Barter today, sister? Well, his pulse is a little stronger. I think he's a little better. But he's still in terrible pain. All right, let's take a look at him. Yes. Well, the morphia seems to be having some effect at last. I think he's pulled through yet. That'll please some of your nurses, sister. I gather they're in quite a state about him. Well, you know what young nurses are, Mr. Joyce. And he's good looking. I see they keep their minds on their work. Oh. Well, there's life in the patient yet. How's your pulse rate, sister? <coughs> hour after hour, for four endless days, the devoted nurses fought for his life. And in the end, they won. I came as soon as I could, sir. Yes, thank you. How is he? He's awake, and I think you can see him today. He's made a remarkable recovery. What sort of chap is he? What are his interests in life? Flying and sport. That's about all. I was afraid of that. You see, sir, he's always been on top in those things. He's got a sort of dynamo inside him. It makes him show off sometimes. He won't accept second best. He's going to have to accept second best now. Well, to Douglas, that would mean failure. He's always had this thing of having to prove himself. Otherwise, he feels out of it. I wonder how he's going to take it when he finds out that he's lost both legs. You mean he doesn't know? No, we haven't decided on the best way of telling him. It's very important that he shouldn't find out by accident. Would you like me to tell him? Thank you. That's why I asked you to come and see me. There's no one with him at the moment. Fine. The boys all send their best wishes. Thanks, old boy. It's nice of you to come and see me. Yes, isn't it? As a matter of fact, I've come to say goodbye. What? I've been posted to the Middle East. Oh. Lucky devil. <laughs> I wish I was going with you. Oh. Giving you some trouble. Hurts like hell. It's bound to hurt at first, I expect. Well, I wish they'd cut it off like they did the right one. That doesn't hurt at all. Would you really like them to cut it off? I don't give a damn what they do as long as they stop it hurting. Matter of fact, Douglas, they have taken it off. Why does it hurt so much, then? take it. Uh, he didn't say much. I think it hit him pretty hard. I better go and see him. Yes, I must get back. Thank you very much for doing a difficult job. Bye. Bye.
gather you've done quite a job on me, sir. Yes, I'm sorry, old chap. I'm afraid it's a case for artificial legs. But they're very good these days, so don't worry too much. That's all right, sir. I'm not worried. I'll get some longer legs. I've always wanted to be taller. will be here in a minute. What's all the excitement for? I'm keen about her, Brace. Oh, get along with you. You hardly even know her. What? Why, the second night I met her, I drove her home 40 miles. It took some time with punctures every other mile. <laughs> anyway, she's keen about me. Is she? She likes to see herself smoothing the fevered brow of the warrior, but I bet it wouldn't last. What a horrible old cynic you are, Brace. I am practical. Don't tell me you want to marry her. If ever I get married, it'll have to be someone I met for the first time the way I am now. It's that or no one. And blazes, Brace, if no one will have me, I'll come back and marry you. I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. You wouldn't get a chance, you'd be killed in a rush. Oh. Everyone at home? Harry Day! John and Tommy, come on in! Well, this is a surprise for me. No, no, no. Oh, oh, thanks, everyone. Oh, good in. Lynn Fair is my favorite. You all know Brace, don't you? The only woman in my life. Hello, Sally. Hello, darling. Hello, Sally. How, How are we today? Fine, thanks. Well, I didn't know we were having a party. Well, neither did I, but it's not a bad idea. Don, put the gramophone on. It's on the table. A good idea. Great. <laughs> Tea for five. What do you think this is? A cafe? Yes. Look sharp. Sally, may I have the pleasure of this dance? Please do. What about waltzing me around the garden, Harry? I haven't had my exercise for the day. All right. I'll push you around. I understand they're going to hold a court of inquiry. Yes, they'll be coming to see you when the doc lets them. Gosh, they're bound to know it was my own fault. Now, honestly, you've got nothing to worry about. Everyone's been so nice about it, you'd think you've been run over by the Air Marshal's daughter. Do you honestly think they'll let me stay in? I'm sure of it. The most they'll do is ground you, probably promote you, give you a staff job. I couldn't stand that, Harry. Tied to an office desk all day, I'd rather die. Now, Douglas. I've got to fly again, old boy. Can't you understand that? I've simply got to. All right, all right. Don't get excited about it. Who says you won't fly? Look at Betty West. He lost a leg in the last war. I saw him flying solo yesterday at Wittering. You wait till I get my tin legs. I'll show you. Home, James. We'll see. Please, leave me alone. Now, don't be silly. You're just being obstinate. Come on. Please, Brace. I've got to do it by myself. How long have you been fooling about out here by yourself? Only about half an hour. I didn't hurt myself. Really, you are worse than a baby. How many times did you fall down? Oh, I don't know, about half a dozen. It serves you right to be in such a hurry. Well, it's this blasted peg leg place. That's like blazes. Well, have a look at it when we get inside. You can't expect it to be perfect in three days, you know. If only you'd be patient. Now, are you going to be warm enough? The wind is rather cold. I'm all right. Uh, we'll put the rug around you. I've got some news for you. I've had all the news I want today, thanks very much. I've heard from Sally. What's the matter? Well, if you must know, Brace, she's walked out on me. What? Well, she doesn't say so, but that's what she means. Her mother's taken her off to South Africa for three months. For a holiday, you mean? Oh, for heaven's sake, Brace, be your age. You know what she means as well as I do. She's not going to have her daughter mixed up with a helpless cripple. Not likely. And she's right. Well, frankly, I think you're a lot better off without her. Thank you. Did you read about Johnson in the paper? 
crashed and killed outright, lucky devil. Don't you dare say that. Why not? He is lucky, isn't he? He's dead. I'd rather be dead than left like this. Now, you listen to me. You're alive, and you're going to stay alive. You can see, you can hear, you can talk. And before long, you're going to be able to walk. Do you know something? A lot of people have spent a great deal of time on you. They've worked for you, fought for you, and prayed for you. And all you can say is that you wish you were dead. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Where's that? That pamphlet. You don't think they're shooting a line, do you, Brace? You really can walk on their tin legs? Yes, of course. Now, would you like to hear my news? Mm -hmm. Would you be interested to hear that the Court of Inquiry have recommended that no disciplinary action be taken against you? What? Right, Lieutenant Day telephoned and told me. He said to tell you that he is delighted. <whistles> I'm delighted, too. Well, that means they can't kick me out. No, of course they can't. Well, if I'm still in the Air Force, they can't very well stop me flying, can they? <laughs> I'd like to see them try. Thanks, Brace. I won't let you down again, I promise. I'll be leaving here soon. I shall miss you. Will you? Come on, Brace. Twice around the garden. I've got work to do. Can't spend my time pushing you around the garden. Oh, never mind your work. Let's go. Mr. Bard will be back in a minute. He's just gone for a walk. For a walk? Cool blood. I think it's time that we were turning back. Yeah. I don't know what the devil I'm going to do without you, Brace. Oh, you'll do the same as ever, just exactly what you want to do. The car is here. Well, just a moment. I probably shan't get another chance to say this, Brace. You don't have to. You saved my life. You know that, don't you? Nonsense. Oh, yes, you did. The others cut me up, but you put me together again. Well, let's say we fought the battle together. We won it, didn't we? Yes, we did. Dear Brace. Another patient coming in this afternoon. Your room is in a dreadful state. Another patient? Lucky man. You'll be careful of those gramophone records, won't you? I will, ma'am. Don't you worry. Here they come, sister. Come along, young man. You're keeping the Air Force waiting. Ha! Doing good. Oh, what about my gramophone record? All aboard, sir. Good. Ah, you're just in time. Don't worry about it. This is purely a social visit. We simply had to come and say goodbye to you. How sweet of you, Sister Thornhill. But it's not really goodbye, you know, because I'll be back in a week or two on my tin legs. Then we'll have a party. That'll be lovely. Come along now, it's time you were off. Right. Well, goodbye, Doc. And thank you for everything you've done. You're taking the plunge into the outside world again. You've got what it takes, Douglas. Goodbye. Good luck to you. Thanks. Well, sister, it's a good job I can't shake hands. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Thank you. Now you, sister. <laughs> goodbye and take care of yourself. Goodbye and thank you. Now you, nurse. Your turn next. Oh, permission to carry on, sister? <laughs> <laughs> nurse Nichols, come on. Don't be shy. Hi, say, what a day this is. <laughs> Brace. Goodbye, Brace. Thank you, Corporal. All set to take off? Yes, sir. Good. Right. Goodbye, ladies. 
Don't forget, don't let any of the other patients kiss you. <laughs> bye, 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 I will. Bye, bye, bye. 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 Bust again. That'll be 52,000 pounds in tons. Like a hand, Douglas? What, with you two sharks? Not likely. Well, shut that window, would you? Anybody think we were in the army? How about a spin in your Bentley, Peely? I'm getting a bit bored with this. <laughs> the three of us put together wouldn't make one good driver. Yeah, besides, it's against the regulations. Good, that settles it. We'll go. If you're windy, I'll drive. Gentlemen, you've just found yourselves a chauffeur. Come on. All right, Peely, I've got my arm out. Well, I hope the matron doesn't see us. Well, if she does, we won't have a leg to stand on. Well, you speak for yourself. <laughs> Come on, Peely, open up a bit. Anybody think we were going to a funeral? Let me have a go. Huh? Ah. Now listen, if I'm going to have my arm broken again, I'd rather have a surgeon do it. I can use my peg leg on the clutch and the hand throttle. Pull what up. do you think about it, Vic? Well, a few more broken bones. All right. about that when the time comes. Hang on. I'm really getting the hang of it now. Yes, but how are you going to stop? Stop? Oh, well, you can't have everything. Look out, Douglas! <laughs> What's your name, mate? Death? Well, what's he worrying about? I missed him. He would just go on doing that, will you? All right, stand by for takeoff. Contact, contact. Chuck's away. <laughs> We made it. Let me set my prop. Thanks. Where are you going? Over there. Poor I bet you could do with a couple after that death ride. Three teas, please. Cream or plain? Cream. Not a great conversation on this, but very nice. I wonder if there are any more like her. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> hey, what sort of place is this? <laughs> I thought you were off. So I'll just serve those three boys over there. Oh, want any help? No, thanks. I can manage. I was a bit worried about Paddy because I knew he'd never done this before. As we rolled off the top, I noticed we were getting a bit too close for comfort. So I waved at Danny, who sheared off smartly. You seem to have crashed. It's a habit of mine. Well, if you'll take your aeroplane off the table, I'll put this tray down. I'm so sorry. Uh, do you mind if I leave the bill? I'm going off now. No, we'll look after the tray. You know, you ought to do that, too. Then we'll both have good luck. I wonder if she's got a sister. Not likely. She's the sort that has a brother, six foot four. Hey, she's left a pencil. I'll take it, John. Doesn't miss a trick, does he? Swindler. Pour out the tea. I'll be back in a sec. Will you be, ma'am? Oh, no, perhaps not. You forgot your pencil. Oh, <laughs> thank you. It's a pleasure. Well, how'd you get on, Douglas? Ask that girl to come out with me one day. Well, there's no time like a present. Hey, go on, Douglas, have a go. Oh, I don't know. I don't suppose she'd want to. You just wait till I find my feet. Well, bring Mr. 
about his other leg, will you? All right, sir. I'll oh, just get this foot firmly on the ground. There, Come on, you? boys, let's get moving. I've got to get him a dance tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, now let's see you try and stand on this one. All right. There's the crutches, please. Thank you. Feels good. Much better than the peg leg. All right. We'll try a step, shall we? All right. Here it goes. Yes. You'll have to lift your leg a little higher. Keep your toe clear. All right. How's that? Well done. Now let's have a shot in the right leg. Thank you. Take this. All right, Walker. Better slip it on. Very good, sir. I didn't expect all this harness, Mr. De Souter. No, don't worry. You'll feel a bit like a parcel to begin with, but remember, your right stump's pretty weak after doing nothing for the past six months. You need all the support you can get. That's it. Let's have those crutches. Never mind the crutches. Try standing without them. All right. Good. Now let's have a go, shall we? Ooh. Ooh. Good Lord, this is impossible. And that's what they all say the first time. I thought I'd walk out of here tonight. Been running about in a fortnight. Now look, Mr. Barter, I think you ought to face it. You'll never walk again without a stick. Damn that, I'll never walk with one. My dear chap, no one with your disability has ever walked without one. What's that got to do with it? All right, let's try a step or two. Well, what do I do? It's impossible. Try kicking the right stump forward, as if you were cracking a whip. Very good. Now, well, come on. My God, I can't move. All right, don't panic. You see, you haven't got any toe or ankle muscles to spring you forward as you used to have. So you've got to learn to do without them. Pull me over this damn leg. Pull me again, for God's sake. Now, let's go. Push harder on my right side. Again. Thanks. You better have a rest now, sir. Thanks. Gotcha. I'll never get it. Yes, you will. But it's going to take time. You wait and see what six months will do. Six months? You know, you'd find a stick very useful. No stick. Not me. Never. Come on, you two. Let's have another go. Try taking shorter steps, sir. Right. It'll be easier. Well, that's a bit better. The shorter steps seem to be the secret. I think we'll try taking a half an inch off the right leg. That might make it a bit easier. How long will it take? Oh, about half an hour. Hurry it up, will you? I've got to see a girl in a couple of days. I want to be walking on these things then. All right, we'll make it 20 minutes. You've done enough, sir. That was a good idea, that half inch off the right leg. Good. Well, that'll do for today. I think you better be getting back. No fear. I'm not going home till I can walk a few steps on my own. All right. If you think you can. Now, let me go. Now, stand back, all of you. I want to do this on my own.
They know what you can do with your damn sticks now. You've done tremendously well. Can I take them back to the hospital to practice? Well, I think you'd better come back here and practice a bit more. But they're expecting me back at Uxbridge on my own two feet. I even bought a clean pair of socks. You'll get your legs soon enough, don't worry. Come on, Mr. Tulit. let's give him a cup of tea. Boyfriend? No, my cousin. Ah. Um, do you ever go out in the evenings? Well, I do sometimes. Oh, well, uh, how would you like to come out with me one night? But I don't know you. Well, I don't know you either, but I'm willing to take a chance. <laughs> well, uh, Go on, be a sport. I'm getting my new legs soon, and I must have somebody to dance with. <laughs> but I still don't know your name. Douglas Barter. And I'm Thelma Edwards. Care to join me? Oh, I don't think I will. Come see, on, I'm... there's nobody about. Will you take tea? Thank you. Cream or plain? about an inch shorter. Well, luckily, my new girlfriend's not very big. Well, if you've got a change of heart, come back. We'll make you a bit taller. <laughs> well, it's still pretty difficult, but it's a lot easier than it was three weeks ago. Of course. You're making wonderful progress. Now, away you go, boys. Let's have another go on my own. the devil do I turn? That's something you've got to practice, turning. It's the most difficult one of all. Mm -hmm. oh, let's see about that. Well, there you are. They're all yours. You found your feet again. It's a bit sooner that you have them, really, I suppose, but uh, you'll only start complaining if I don't. Shall I wrap them for you? Not on your life. I'm walking out on them. Come and help me get dressed. It looks good, it feels good. You look fine. Mr. Walker, you can put that back in the cupboard. Now, what about a stick? Just for the time being. No, thanks. I mean to go on the way I've started. Well, don't expect too much for a while. You've done darn well so far. <laughs> Thank you for putting up with me. The car's waiting, sir. Right. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Walker. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Mr. Tulin, don't forget to come and see us if you run into any trouble. I won't. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Hello, Douglas. Yeah, let's give you a hand. No, I can manage. Don't be so touchy. I'm sorry, Peely. I've got to work this out for myself. Hey, fellas, Long John Silver's got his undercarriage back. Hello. Hey, how goes it, Douglas? Well, I got him. At least I look normal, as long as I don't move. Come on, let's see you do a circuit, Douglas. Well, I'm flaked out. I just climbed the stairs. Bet you five shillings you don't make your own bed in one. You're on. Hold those, Peely. 
Come on, Douglas, you can make it. Don't rush it. Go on, get stuck at it. I'll take the boy with the thin legs. Slow. That's the idea. Stick it up, boy. You'll make it. Don't weaken, Dougie. Come on. Watch it. Yes, steady. I get my leg next week. There goes my five, Bob. Come on, man. Try, man. Try. Dougie. Corner coming up. You can go and pick up that five bob. You all right, sir? Well, it's my stumps. They hurt like the devil. I think I must have rubbed the skin off. Mm, I'm not surprised. You seem to be overdoing it. Well, if they're always going to chafe like this, how am I ever going to walk any distance? I'll tell you what I'll do, sir. I'll put some sticking plaster on the stumps. That might help. That's a good idea. And I'll have another go. Well, that wasn't what I meant at all, sir. What I meant was... Never mind what you meant. I'm telling you what I want. You go and get that plaster. Where's your boyfriend these days? What boyfriend? Nice Air Force boy, the one who had the accident. Oh, him? I hardly know him. I thought you said he asked you out. Oh, that was some time ago. I don't suppose he can get around very much. Are you all right? Yes, oh, I'm enough, okay, Chuck. Enough, Douglas. You've been at it the whole afternoon. Let's go and sit down, huh? Let me go, boys. I've got to get the hang of it. Oh! Well, don't bust yourself. You'll still be there. Well, I certainly can't go and see the girl like this. Look, boys. No hands. <laughs> Well, is this the big day? It certainly is. Douglas, don't you think you ought to change your socks before you go? It's getting a bit noticeable. <laughs> Why? I haven't had my shoes off for two weeks. What are you going to do, send your legs to the laundry? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, John. What news of the leg? They say it'll be stiff for good. Blast them. There you are. What did I tell you? Have it off, old boy. Have it off. <laughs> <laughs> ah, here we go. All ready for you, sir. Good. Yep. Now, be careful, Douglas. Remember, they can't fit a tin head on you. Better hang on to the wooden one. Wish me luck. Well, give him my love. Ha-ha! That's chance of that. Blimey, it'll take off in a minute. Well, that's one thing you'll never do. Not anymore. I'll bring it straight away, madam. <laughs> Wonderful. That's funny. I was just going to say the same about you. <laughs> Thank you. I, I know. A... <laughs> <laughs> I know of a wonderful place for dinner. How would you like to come out and celebrate? Celebrate? Oh, I'd love to. What time do you finish? Six o'clock. I'll pick you up. Thank you. All right, for you to talk about your dinner, I haven't had my tea yet. <coughs> she won't be long. Leave a good tip. Learned to fly. Nothing much else happened till I met you. <laughs> well, one or two things, perhaps. We must do this again. In London, maybe? Thank you. Yes, I'd like to. 
I won't be here much longer. They're letting me out and about now I'm more mobile. I'm going over to Kenley next week for a few days. 23 Squadron. How did you know that? Uh, well, my father was a wing commander and I've got three cousins in the Air Force. I know more about you than you think. I just had to be more careful. Why didn't you say so before? Well, you didn't give me much of a chance. <laughs> I know, I talk too much. What are you doing at that restaurant? Oh, friends of mine run it and I've been helping them out. I'm leaving on Friday. I'm rather sorry, it's been great fun. Do you think it's a good idea you're going back to Kenley? I mean, mightn't it depress you? Well, why should it? I belong in the Air Force and I'm going to stay in it and fly. I should have thought you'd had enough of flying. Oh, no fear. I've had my crash now. It won't happen again. Doesn't much matter if it does. I've got no more legs to lose. <laughs> good for you. Would you like to dance? Oh, yes, of course, if you'd like to. Why not? I didn't know you could dance as well. well I don't know myself yet. If I can walk, all right, I can certainly walk clutching a girl. If I trip, I'll hang on to you. <laughs> on my foot. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> oh, come on, I can't cope with this. You know, these new legs are marvellous. When I was standing on your foot, I couldn't feel a thing. done that for a long time. I really enjoyed myself this evening. You've been wonderful company. That's just about the nicest thing anybody's ever said to me. Thelma, wish me luck at Kenley. It's important, isn't it, going back? There's nothing more important. How are you? Nice to see you again, sir. I bet them all you'd come walking in here one of these days. And here you are, sir. And everything's just the same. What about my kit? It's all here, sir, exactly as you left it. All right. Why is it all so quiet, Bates? Oh, uh, 32 squadrons away on a gunnery course. Uh-huh. Hello, Harry. Hello, man. Good to have you back with us. Well, excuse me, sir. I'll unpack your bags later. Thank you, Bates. Well, take a good look, old boy. The very latest. Nobly knees, hair, corns. <laughs> the lot. Splendid. He's always wear a good pair of boots. Somebody ought to have them restudied. I shall want to use this again, Harry. Well, I understand if you pass your medical, you'll be going for a test at Central Flying School. I'll pass. Look, you've got an Avro here, haven't you? Yes. Hey, wait a minute. Well, I only want a bit of jewel, just to get the feel of it. Sorry. Dead against the rules, Douglas. The rules? They were written for the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men. Remember? <laughs> Well, how are you feeling? Fine. All set? All set. Blast. What's the matter? Bit of cramp, I think. Both wrists. Too much office work. <laughs> you better take her, Douglas. Thanks, Harry. Hang on to your hat. now. What's that? I said no aerobatics. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't hear. <laughs> I'm sorry if I 
to wait so long, sir. Shouldn't be long now, though. <laughs> That's all right. It'll be worth waiting for. How did it feel going back to Central Flying School again, sir? I enjoyed it. Have you heard anything about my medical, Mr. Blake? I think the wing commander's got all the reports, sir. Mm -hmm. Hope they send me back to fly with my old squadron. Flying officer Bada? Yes. Uh, wing commander Hargreaves will see you now. Thank you, sir. Good luck, sir. Now, good afternoon, Bada. Afternoon, sir. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Sorry we kept you waiting so long for a decision. That's all right, sir. I take it my report from the Central Flying School was satisfactory? Oh, very. Your instructor stated there was nothing he could teach you about flying. In fact, that you taught him a thing or two. Unfortunately, we can't pass you fit for flying because there's nothing in King's regulations which covers your case. Of course there's nothing in King's regulations, sir. That's why I was sent to the Central Flying School, to see if I could fly. It's not my decision, you know, Bada. They expected me to fail, didn't they? I'm very sorry it's turned out like this. You mean I'm grounded for good? I'm afraid so. There must be some alternative. Well, you could go on the retired list, leave the Air Force on the grounds of ill health. Sell bootlaces on street corners? Oh, it's not as bad as that. You'd have your retired pay, and no doubt a total disability pension. Yes, that just about says it all. Well, you don't have to make up your mind at once, of course. Take your time. After all, there's Yes, sir, thank you. doesn't say anything about people like me flying, that's all. Does that mean no more flying ever? Yes. Well, you'll still have a career in the service. No, I won't, Thelma. I won't take a ground job. If I can't fly, I'll leave. Well, there are other things besides flying. For instance? Us. I'm not much of a proposition. No money, no job, no legs. We'll make out. We'll have a damn good try. And good luck, sir. Hope you find the job you're looking for. Yes. Thanks. Yes, sir. Ah, but you haven't given me the address yet. Huh? Oh, um, Melbourne office. Yes, sir. Um, well, um... Uh, no smoking, Mr. Bader. Oh. Yes, sir. With regard to your... No, delete that. Well, Bader. Yes? This letter you wrote this morning, it's a little abrupt, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, what's the matter? Well, it's rather like a telegram. You want to wrap it up a bit to the chaps out there, such as we would suggest, or... Perhaps you've already considered. Well, I've always been taught to write letters so that people could understand what you're saying. You'll have to get used to different ways here. Right. Where were we? Dear sir. Reference is made to your communication of the... We beg to point out... That's polite. We beg to point out that reference is made to your communication of the 8th inst instant. The boredom and the routine of his new job made each day seem a month. He was the prisoner of his legs, and Douglas never made a good prisoner. 
Then one weekend, he found what he needed. A new challenge. Good shot, Adrian. Well done. You're a good 20 yards up on me. Going to walk around a couple of holes, Lord Douglas? I don't think so, boy. I think we'll stay here and potter around a bit, shall we, darling? All right. I tell you what, leave me one of your clubs in the ball, eh? Good idea. Give me a nibble. Here, sir. Here's one that cuts more grass than my lawnmower. <laughs> now, don't dig yourself in. Come on, you old get ball. back. Oh, yes. Ta. How did it feel? Not bad. Can't be all that difficult. Oh, do be careful, Douglas. Now then, let's see about this. Oh, Douglas! Ha! Ha! Well, I kept my head down anyway. All right, darling, don't worry. I didn't hurt myself. Oh, the going's pretty soft anyway. All right, stand back a bit. Oh, oh. oh darling, that's... I'm all right. Let's go and have I'm some all tea. right, darling. It's just a question of balance. There's nothing to it, really. Get back a bit. I'm okay. Don't worry about me. Now, keep still, you little devil. Now then, keep still. Ah! I moved it. Did you see that, darling? Only about five yards, but I moved it. Well done, darling. Pitch it for me, will you? Now then, let's have another go. Pop it down there. Now stand back. A bit more. Now tee it up a bit. You're allowed to on the tees anyway. Back a bit. Now then. Ah! I hit it. You see that, darling? Right slap bang in the middle of the club. Well, I hope you're satisfied. Not by a long chalk. Oh. You won't be beaten, will you? Not by a ruddy golf ball, I won't. No, Douglas. Come on. Come and sit down. Have a rest. All right. You know, darling? This is a game I could play, and on equal terms, too. No favors. You know, I like you looking after me. Well, somebody has to. You'll have to be fit for work on Monday. Well, why worry about that for 200 a year? There's two pounds for the bill last night, and five pounds last weekend. Well, that still leaves 193. That's a lot more than most people are getting. Yes, I know. I don't suppose they drink champagne, though. <laughs> the trouble with you is you've got a conscience. <sighs> yes, I'm afraid I have. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't mind. I wouldn't change you. You know, Thelma, I suppose you and I ought to think about getting married. Well, that's what I like about you, Douglas. You're so intense, so passionate. Well, I'm sorry, but I... what else does one say? <laughs> well, uh, you could... But look, the rate I'm going, I'm not going to be much better off for years, so we might as well take a chance straight away. Well, that's the most romantic proposal a girl's ever received. Good. Then that's settled. Now let's have another whack at that golf ball. Sorry, darling. No cross swords, no guard of honor. It was all so quick, I hardly feel married. Never mind. We'll have it done properly in church one day. I'm happy, just as it is. You never thought I'd settle down, did you? Are you really a pipe and fireside man now? Yes, bung on the old slippers. It's me for the quiet life. <laughs> Thelma knew that in his golf, as in everything, he would drive himself too hard. But she also knew why. He might not be flying, but he was fighting. He fought 18, sometimes even 36 holes in a day. And he beat them. So life for Douglas Barter achieved some sort of compromise. And it might have gone on that way forever. But one day in 1939. Aha. Dead on time. You must be keen. Come along. I'll take you around right away. Did you have any trouble? No, he said he'd be absolutely delighted to see you again. Well, I must say it's a bit of luck, Johnny. Did you put in a good word for me? Of course. Didn't see why I should, though. You know, we're short of airplanes. So what? Well, as I remember, you were rather careless with them once. Ah, but I've changed. Mm. So have the airplanes. <laughs> you remember Barter, sir? Remember you? <laughs> I nearly kicked you both out of Cranwell once. Good luck, Atlas. Hello, sir. <laughs> nice to see you again. It was good of you to see me again so promptly. Oh, not at all. I'm always very interested in my old boys. I gather from Sunderson that you want a job. Well, what sort of job would you like? Oh, flying, of course. 
Oh. Oh, I'm very sorry, but I, I'm only dealing with ground jobs. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's no good to me, sir. I'm, I'm a trained pilot. Yes, but in the circumstances, Look, sir, it, it, it's, it's difficult for me to explain this, but I've got to get back again. I've simply got to. And you're the only one who can help me. I must fly. I beg your pardon, sir, but I've got to fly again. I tell you what I'll do, Barter. I'll give you a note to take across to the medical people. Excuse me, please. Thank you. Mr. Blake? Hello, sir. I thought you'd be alone. What is it this time? Same again. But they'll pass me now. No, not for flying, I'm afraid, sir. Never. We'll see about that. Well, take a seat, sir. We'll get you through the doctors as soon as we can. Thank you. You're wasting your time, I'm afraid, sir. They'll never let you fly. How have you been keeping? Well, we've given you a pretty thorough examination. You seem to be 100% fit. Apart from your legs. Well, it's not fair to drag them in, sir. Oh, why not? Well, they, they simply don't exist. It's like saying a man's 100% fit apart from a cold when he hasn't got a cold. Or the flying officer's 100% sane when he hasn't got a brain. Yes, sir. The legs can't be ignored, just like that, you know. Two red bits from Air Vice Marshal Hallahan. Well, he seems to be on your side. Yes, sir. Let's leave it to the Central Flying School to assess your flying capability. And if I pass again? If you pass, I think you can shake the moths out of your old uniform. Thank you very much. And all the best to you. Thank you. Excuse me. Mr. Blake? Sir? Where can I buy a Spitfire? Douglas. As for that idea of yours, the attack formation, well, I see your point. I knew you would. Well, why don't we all do it from now on? Oh, now, hold your horses. For one thing, it's not in the book. Oh, for blast the book. In the war on it, isn't it? Look, Douglas, nobody knows yet whether the book's right or wrong. Well, the chaps in the last war knew, didn't they? And that's good enough for me. And you mark my words, Johnny. When this one really starts, it'll be their tactics that'll prove successful again. Well, maybe you're right. I know I'm right. Now, let's go and have the break. <laughs> anyway, you'll soon be able to try out some of those theories of yours. What do you mean? Tuffy Mermaid wants you as a flight commander. I know, but what about the AOC? He's agreed. What? You'll move over to his squadron in a day or two. That means I can still stay at Uh-huh. Hello, what's got into the boy? Hey, Paddy, what's happening? It's on, sir. What's on? The war. Jerry's on the move. He's invaded France and the Low Countries. Good. Now we can really get at it. Sir, hmm? there's a flap on, sir. Squadron's taking off at four. Right, Whitaker. What time is it? Three o'clock, sir. Right. <laughs> Come on, Doug, let's get your legs on. What's up, John? Both our squadrons ordered to Dunkirk. Something about evacuation. Evacuation? Phew. This could be it. Good luck, Douglas. Good luck, chum. Send in a cup of tea. Right.
No, I'm afraid not. How about you, Douglas? Hey, look. Yep, got a 109 just south of Dunkirk. Oh, Joe. Smashed his tail up. Cut it off like a knife. I saw that one, Douglas. You fixed him before I had a chance. Oh, everyone back? All of ours are, but the CO of 19 squadron's missing. What, Johnny Sanderson? I saw a Spitfire going down in smoke. I'm sure it was a Spitfire. Where? What happened? It was across the other side. I couldn't see how it finished up. Poor old John. Well, he probably turned up in a day or two, having hopped a boat from Dunkirk. <laughs> Apart from that, I got a good squad at a 109. I saw bits flying off. I'd like to claim it as a probable. I've been hearing of your work as a flight commander with W. Mermigan. So I'm giving you a squadron. 242. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You don't seem very pleased about it. What's the matter? Well, sir, I broke a Spitfire last night. I overshot the landing. You won't have heard about it yet. Well, you're lucky. Your new squadron has hurricanes. Now listen to me. Your pilots are mostly Canadians. And they've had a very rough time in France. They're a bit fed up, especially with authority. They want good leadership. I think you might be the man. I understand, sir. I'll do my best. Well, good luck in your first command. We shall soon need every fighter squadron we've got. The Luftwaffe seems to be gathering across the channel. Hey, you chaps, come on. Brace yourselves. New CO's here. It's arrived, has he? We're coming in this door at any moment. What's it like, Cena? Well, brace yourselves again. He's got no legs. What do you mean he's got no legs? I mean he's got no legs. He gets around on a couple of tin ones. Great. So now we carry a passenger in the driver's seat. Who's in charge here? Who's the senior man? Is anyone in charge? I guess I am. What's your name? Turner. Turner, what? Sir. I want to see all pilots in my office, in an hour. Yes, sir. It's not smart to walk around looking like a lot of mechanics who haven't washed the grease off their hands. A good squadron is a smart squadron. And I want this to be a good squadron. You're the scruffiest looking lot I've ever seen. And another thing, there'll be no more roll neck sweaters and flying boots in the mess. When you're not flying, you'll wear shoes, shirts and ties. Is that clear? Most of us haven't got shoes, shirts and ties. Except what we have on. What do you mean? Lost it all in France. That's not the only thing we lost. Half our boys were casualties. It was every man for himself. We had to scrounge our own food and sleep under the wings of the aircraft. We were shunted from one place to another. 
They couldn't care what happened to us. We had to search for enough petrol to take off and fight. Then we got bust up. Had to make our own way back to England. Then they sent us up here. All the good it did us. We're still no better off. No better off. We might as well have stayed in France. Yeah, we might as well have stayed in France. All right. I'm sorry. I apologize for my remarks. Tomorrow you can all go into Norwich, order what you want from the tailors, and I'll guarantee that the bill is paid, OK? Thank you very much. Apart from clothing, sir, we've been trying to get a new issue of spares and tools for the aircraft, but nothing happened. What do you mean, you haven't got any? Crawley Millen has a pen knife. <laughs> we'll see about that. Mr. West. Sir? What's our equipment state? 18 hurricanes, all new, sir. What's all this about no spares and tools? We lost them in France. Have you put in for a new issue? Yes, sir. The stores officer says it'll have to go through the usual channels, sir. Well? Well, the uh, channels seem to be clogged, sir. How are they? Well, we'll run him along, clog them. Now, listen, it's in black and white in section 2, sub clause 4. It definitely states that airmen only get one issue. Mugs one, knives one, four. Where are the spares and tools for 242 Squadron? I'm very sorry, I can't produce everything on demand. It takes time. What's the hold up? If you knew the amount of paperwork involved for a Hold your blazes with your paperwork and your forms and your blasted toilet paper. I want that stuff and I want it fast. I'm sorry, the book says I must wait three months before I can initiate the procedure for hastening new issues. Fine, we'll send Gerling a telegram and ask him not to come over for three months. Listen, sir! I want those spares and tools and I want them quick. Thomas? Sir? Been working all night? Yes, sir. Had your breakfast? Yes, thank you, sir. Good show. Just on my way to find you, sir. Well, the boys are now fit for anything, but we still haven't got our spares and tools, so I've sent this signal off to Griffith. 242 now operational as regards pilots, but non operational, repeat, non operational as regards equipment. Huh? Good heavens. Why the devil didn't you show this to me first? I'll take any kicks that are coming, sir. But you know, you just can't do this. Well, I've done it. There'd be an awful riot group. There'd be an awful riot fighter command. I sent them a copy, too. Well, I'd say that your squadron will either be getting new equipment or a new CO. I would like to bet on which. You'd better be available when the CNC sends for me. Yes, sir. I'll be in my office. Same old trouble. Fingers. <laughs> no, but seriously, I still think the book's wrong about fighter tactics. The principles that paid off in the last war are still good today, even though the airplanes are faster. Now remember, the chap who's got the height controls the battle, especially if he comes out of the sun. And the chap who gets up close is the chap who knocks him down. Fighter Command Headquarters on the phone for you, sir. Spares and tools. This is it. Barda? Squadron Leader Edwards here. What's the meaning of this extraordinary signal you've sent today? Well, it means exactly what it says. This squadron is out of action until I get some tools. I'm quite sure you can operate with what you've got. Now, listen, don't you tell me what I can do. I'm telling you what I want. And until I get it, this squadron remains non-operational. Repeat, non-operational. You don't seem to care what trouble you cause. But that signal is going to bring you a lot of trouble. The Commander-in-Chief's furious about it. Oh, stop. Well, that's telling them, Skipper. Come on, I'll buy you a beer. Squadron leader Bada. Commander-in-Chief will see you now, sir. Thank you. Now, what is all this about equipment and that signal of yours, Barnum? Well, sir, I've done everything possible to get my spares and tools. If the Germans attacked, my squadron would soon be unable to leave the ground. So I decided it was time to do something about it. I see. And those remarks of yours on the telephone last night to squadron leader Edwards. Did you think that would help? That was a bit of an argument between two officers of equal rank, sir. He tried to shake me by saying you'd be furious about my signal. That annoyed me. He said I was furious. I will not have any officer taking my name in vain or predicting my emotions. I'll talk to Squadron Leader Edwards later. Very good, sir. Now, the sending of that signal was highly irregular, Barter. You must not short circuit the usual channel. No, sir. What exactly do you want?
Satisfied, Mr. West? I've got enough stuff to service all the planes in fighter command, sir. Never, never call it a plane. It's an aeroplane, Mr. West. I'm sorry, sir, an aeroplane. Good. Peter, get a signal off to group, copy to fighter command. Yes, sir. 242 squadron, fully operational. Turner? Sir. Tell the flight commanders to round up the boys. Squadron take off. 30 minutes. Battle practice, sir. Some passenger. Legs or no legs. I've never seen such a mobile fireball. Come on, Crow. Do you know the Muffin Man? Do you know the Muffin Man? What do you think of them? You seem to have your wild young men eating out of your hand now. At least they're not biting it anymore. They're a good bunch. They're coming along very nicely. You're longing for some more fighting, aren't you? Hey, fellas, shut up a minute. Listen. Shut up! The Battle of Britain is about to begin. Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. The whole fury and might of the enemy must very soon be turned on us. Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be freed. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty. So bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its Commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say, this was their finest hour. <laughs> news and this is John Snag reading it. At 11 o'clock this morning, large formations of enemy bombers attacked a convoy in the English Channel and three seaport towns on the south coast. Some damage was done to port installations and there were some casualties. Five enemy aircraft were shot down, two of our aircraft are missing. A statement was issued this morning by the Ministry of Food. This statement Control it quickly. New regulations for Turn that damn thing off. Of Woodall. Hello, Woody. Douglas Barter here. We just heard the news. What's happening? Has the balloon gone up? No, we think so, Douglas. It looks like it. Well, what are we waiting for? We're all on readiness. When do we go? Now, oh, hold your horses. We're all covering the Midlands up here. I can't bring you chaps in until they come into our area. Oh, for Pete's sake, Woody. They want every fighter they can get in this house. Yes, and as soon as we all get them down there, Jerry will switch his attack to the Midlands. Well, what are we supposed to do? Sit on our tails and do nothing? Well, you take it easy. The war isn't going to finish overnight. Hello, Mrs. Richards. How are you? Hello. Nice to see you again. I want to keep an eye on John. One of our new WAF seems very keen about him. Oh. <laughs> well, sir. Seems to have started. Yes, it certainly does. I didn't call off the party. It might be the last one we'll have for some time. I agree with you, sir. Excuse me. Excuse me. Mm, certainly. Come on, Dickie boy. Cheer up. Why so gloomy? Stan, keep an eye on him. Father Lars Jin. Well, darling. Oh, darling. I didn't know if you'd be here. Johnny Saunderson's mother rang today. He's safe. Ah. He's a prisoner. I Thank God. Poor old John. Well, it won't be long before he escapes. I beg your pardon. Come on in. Thank you, sir. Squad need a bar, sir? Yes? We're posted, you, sir. M my name's Jones. How do you do? How do you do, sir? This is part officer Nicholson, sir. How do you do, Nicholson? How do you do, sir? Stan, two more for us. Jones and Nicholson. Go on in, boy. Get him a drink. Well, I'll see you later. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Jones and Nicholson. Douglas, they look so young. <laughs> They'll be all right. I'll look after them. But who'll look after you? You're not immortal, you know. Tell me about her. I've an engine in front of me. 
Armor plate behind and tin legs underneath. How the devil can they get me? Clothing parade, 15.30. Uh-huh, there it comes. They'll be asking for reinforcements down south any moment. Operations. Yes, sir. Two for two. Squadron Red leader, steersman answering. Vector 190. Buster. 70 plus bandits approaching North Weald. Hello, what is it? About time. Over. Hello, Laycock Red leader. Bandits should be in your area now. Woody, can't see any train here, Bart. Over. Hello, Laycock Red leader. Bandits should be close to you. Patrol North Weald. Hello, Woody. That's no good to me. I'm turning west, climbing up some. Over. Okay, Douglas, I hope you're right. We're sticking our necks out. Enemy aircraft, 10 o'clock level, green section, take on the trap route.
Martin. Tommy will put me down for 2109. It's definite. Right. What's the score? 12 confirmed and several more probables. Not a single bomb in the whole of North Wheels. Not a casualty to us. Yes, to it. Here's Lee Mallory's kit. That was a good show, Barter. Well done. Thank you, sir. Wish we'd had more aircraft. One squadron not enough for you? Oh, I didn't mean that, sir. But if we'd had three times the number of aircraft, we'd have shot down three times as many. We had everything in our favor. Height, sun, but too few aeroplanes. How would you have handled, say, three squadrons? Well, sir, the same as one. Get in the best position to attack the enemy and then attack. After all, the only object of flying information is to get a number of fighters to the same place together. Once the battle starts, it's every man for himself, and that's that. I'd rather have started it with 36 aeroplanes than 12. Well, that's all, sir. I agree with you. It's a good idea. We'll try it. Woodhall, will you arrange that 19 and 310 fly with 242 in future? Yes, sir. I'll get hold of the squadron commanders and we'll plan it out. Bader will lead with 242, of course. Yes, sir. And you must try to keep him out of trouble from the ground. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank now you. I'll have a word with the boys. This aircraft ready in half an hour. I'm sorry, sir. This job will take a couple of days. That's no good. I said half an hour. I'm sorry, sir. I can't let this aircraft fly, sir. All right, Mr. West. Get it done as soon as possible. Looks as if you caught a bullet hole yourself. Uh-huh. Here, miss. You must be getting quite careless. Hi, Woody. Well, how was it, Douglas? Ah, oh, not so good, I'm afraid, old boy. We were sent off too late. I had to attack on the climb, and of course we got bounced by the enemy 109s. It certainly looks as if somebody had bounced you. Oh, oh you'll see the other fella. <laughs> Crowley Milling got him. Good. But seriously, though, Woody, if we could get off the ground earlier and be up there waiting for him, we could then fight on our own terms. Uh-huh. If I could get upstairs with five squadrons, I could really start up. Look, the is coming tomorrow morning. Why don't you tell him? I'll back you, and I'm sure he'll agree. Good show. Thanks. Douglas's new tactics proved so successful that very soon he was leading a unique formation of five squadrons. This became known as the Duxford Wing. His pilots looked on him as a superman, and his breezy confidence in the air was so reassuring to young pilots flying into battle for the first time. Hello, Douglas. Vector 190, orbit north wheel, make Angel 20. Uh, Woody, do me a favor, will you? I'm supposed to be playing squash with Peters in an hour's time. Give him a ring and tell him I won't be back till later. I haven't got time, Douglas. But can't you make time? All you've got to do is to pick up one of those telephones from that row in front of you. Go on, there's a good chap. All right, all right. Just for the sake of peace and quiet, I will. Now, would you mind getting on to the wall? Hitler had postponed his invasion until the following spring. Hitler, the invincible, had suffered his first defeat. The Battle of Britain was over. Well, Douglas, the Duxford Wing did splendid there. What was it, 150 enemy aircraft? 152, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Turner. You're welcome, sir. How would you like to be a wing commander, Douglas? Well, if I can continue flying, I'd like it very much, sir. Good. We're working on some ideas to carry the fight across to France this summer. And we're going to build more fighter wings like your team. Would I stay here, sir? No, you'll go to Tangmere. With my squadron? No, you'd have three Spitfire squadrons there. Hey, sir, you can't post our seal. Because we won't work for anybody else if you Turner, do that. Stop poking the AOC with your pipe. Oh, sorry, sir. Let me get you another drink. Sir. Oh, thank you, Douglas. You know, sir, if I can't take my squadron with me, I, I'm not so sure I want to go. You'll do as you're told. Very good, sir. Dougie. 
Welcome to Tangmere. If I'd known you were going to be my new station commander, I'd have thought twice about coming. I heard the old man wouldn't let you think once even. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your office. Bags a bump? Oh, stag from floor to ceiling. Oh. Just in case you thought a wing commander's life's just stooting around the sky all day. Well, Dougie, see you later. Thanks, Woody. Hello, hello, hello. What's all this? Three bus drivers waiting to sign on, sir. <laughs> I asked for you three. I must want my head examined. Come in. Well, Sergeant, who are you? Uh, Sergeant Williams, sir. What's your job? Orderly room, sir. Hmm. What are these? A file to your attention, sir. I see. Now they've had it. Anything else? No, sir. Good. Let's get on with the war, shall we, gentlemen? What's the gents? Can... Looks like a sweep of the room. Marshalling yards. Bombers with fighter escort. No, I'm sorry. You must have the wrong number. Oh, darling. Oh. oh. Oh, it was so late. I've got some coffee for you. Come and sit down. Thank you. I lost three pilots today. All first class chaps. If only I could. Oh, I don't know. Look, don't start blaming yourself again. You can't do any more than you do. You've already done more sweeps than anyone else in fighter command. Darling, you know this can't go on indefinitely. Who says it can't? The AOC, for one. Woody was talking to him this morning. He thinks you should have a spell off operations. Why? I'm quite fit. I'd rather like to finish the season. You make it all sound like a cricket match. Why can't you have a rest? Because, Thelma, the wing needs me. And if you're killed, the wing will have to do without you. Look, darling, let's go to Scotland for a fortnight's golf. We'll do a tour of all the courses. No. They're lovely courses, Douglas. The best turf in the world. By the sea. You'll find them far more difficult than the English ones. I'll think about it. No. This time you're going to do something about it. Twice a day I know you're 30,000 feet over France, and you probably won't all be coming back. And one day I know it's going to be you. Well, I'd just like a week off, too. Just a few days of knowing that you're going to be home for dinner. It would help you, too. All right, I'll go. When, Douglas? Next week. Promise? Yes. Touch wood. Oh, darling, it's not that I'm selfish, but a dead hero is no good to the Air Force either. By now, everyone in the wing felt Douglas was invulnerable. It was as if his presence shielded those who flew with him. The whole station came to believe that the enemy would never get him. Just funny calling, just funny calling. Enemy aircraft coming up below.
you haven't said anything all afternoon. What do you really think? You'll have to face it, Thelma. We should have heard something by this time. I'm sorry. I guess he's had it. Hello, yes? Thank you, Woody. Douglas is a prisoner. Yes, wow! Well, well, I've never held him. Did you see? You were quite wrong. You know me. I'm always wrong. Where? How? Woody doesn't know. But the Germans have asked for another leg to be dropped. Oh, we'll do that. Yeah. No. He said they're going to do it on a normal bombing raid. My heart, I knew they'd never get him. Ah, bonjour, Lucille. Bonjour, Commandant. Thank you. What's that? That's a step in the right direction. All you need now is some clothes and a rope, and you're in luck. You have everything you want? Um, well, not exactly, Doctor. Well, I know I've got my legs back, but I can't very well walk around with them in my nightshirt. Why not? Well, for one thing, it's very embarrassing for the nurses. <laughs> oh, that's the regulations. I know, but can't you make an exception in my case? And don't forget I'm invited to tea at the aerodrome. Oh, well, I suppose in your case it is all right. Very well, then. I shall have your clothes brought back to you. Thank you, Doctor. That's very decent of you. Monsieur Gouvenet, avec nous. Now all we need is a rope. Tell him when he wakes up. All right, but don't forget. <laughs> they hear him. I'm sunk. I'll send a nurse in. You'll be up the creek if you're left hanging. You won't be able to climb back up. But if you drop, you'll cut yourself in half. That's a chance I have to take.
monsieur Douglas. Oui. Madame Gilbert Petit. Ah. Vite, par ici. It will not be easy, monsieur. You must walk three kilometers. Will you be all right? I'll manage. Let's go. There's a long way in desert curfew. Come on. House. I know she'll bear. Attention, Bosch. Now take my right arm. Ce genre lui font mal. Venez vous asseoir ici, dans ce fauteuil. Oh. Gilbert, il faut partir. Il sera en sécurité ici. You are refreshed, monsieur? Yes, madame. Thank you for looking after my legs. That ointment is very soothing. Bien. I must examine his doctor. If they find me here, you're liable to be shot. I ought to be hiding outside somewhere. They will not find you. And tonight, when it is dark, my son-in-law will take you to some more friends. Now, drink your coffee. Uh -huh. Merci, madame. <laughs> Les Boches, mets-le sous la taille. Venez, monsieur. You win. So, Wing Commander, we caught you. You speak English very well. Oh, I lived in London, Streatham, for 11 years before the war. The people in that cottage know nothing about my being here. Oh, so I understand. After you, sir. Where to? Back to hospital? No. First to headquarters of St. Omer, and from there we'll go to Germany. Die beiden auch. Ja, ja. I told you they had nothing to do with it. Oh, they'll be just taken for routine questioning. Into the car, please.
We are going to take your legs away until you are safely in the camp in Germany. You will not escape again. In point of fact, he escaped twice more during the next eight months. It was the old story. As long as there was a battle to be fought, Douglas was going to fight it. I'm in, Commander. You're leaving the camp. You have to be ready to go tomorrow. What, again? Where to this time? We're taking you somewhere more comfortable. <laughs> this is not comfortable here for anyone. I'd rather live in a pigsty with my friends in a palace by myself, thank you very much. I'm not going. The Commandant says you have to go. Take me to the Commandant. He'll see you when you move out tomorrow. Oh, no, he won't. Not unless he drags me out. I'm staying here. Give me in action! I'm staying here. Mr. Root! You must stand to attention when you address the German officer. When I want you to teach me manners, I'll ask you. Until then, shut up. Muss man sich das gefallen lassen? Ja, lassen Sie das. Wir besprechen das morgen. You leave tomorrow. Hello! Pretty Johnny Sanderson isn't here. He'd have enjoyed this, like the old days. Wing Commander Bardo. As you know, I have instructions to transfer you to another camp. Well, you know what you can do with them. You still refuse to go? That's right. Then we must use force. You can always try. Wing Commander Day, a senior British officer, will you please persuade Wing Commander Bader to obey our orders? You may have three minutes. They're within their rights, you know. Ah, some blazes with them. <laughs> You've given them a lot of headaches. We're all on your side. But don't forget, it only needs a spark to start an incident. This place is too crowded to have bullets flying around. It's all right, Harry. You win. Goodbye, Douglas. Goodbye, boy. Just send for my kit. See to it for me, will you? Yes. He's inspecting the bastard. <laughs> Douglas was moved from prison camp to prison camp until inevitably he ended up at Colditz Castle. And it was here that he finished his four years of captivity on a spring morning in 1945. Hey, they've arrived! The Yanks are here! We're certainly glad to see you, Colonel. Can you tell me if there are any Spitfires operating in this area? I'd like to get in a couple of trips before it's all over. Well, as far as I know, all the British squadrons are up north. Oh, thanks. See you in a moment. You'd think these chaps would have had enough. Why don't they forget about it and go home? I thought it would be a bit of a surprise. Oh, a bit of a surprise? Oh, darling, you look wonderful. That's funny. I was going to say the same about you. Oh, I... I bo <laughs> can't think of anything to say. There's so much. 
I know. It'll all come back gradually. Yes, there's plenty of time now. All the time in the world. Well, I don't know about that. The war isn't over yet. Oh, it is for you, my darling. Oh, Douglas, please. Look, we'll talk about that later, shall we? Oh, God, haven't you had enough? Well, darling, I'm still in the Air Force, and there's still a war on out in the Far East. All I want is just one last fling before it's all over. Thelma, do you know something? I've forgotten what a very pretty girl you are. I suppose it won't make any difference what I say. You'll still have your last fling. And so Douglas never had his last fling. But on September the 15th, 1945, the fifth anniversary of the greatest day in the Battle of Britain, 300 aircraft were to pass in triumphant procession. In the forefront, 12 survivors of the battle. A few of the few, flying again over London, the city they had so valiantly defended. Their leader was Group Captain Douglas Barter. Sir? Hello, Barter. You remember Wing Commander Crowley Millings, huh? How do you do? Group Captain Turner. Hello, How do you do, sir? Well, Johnny, I wish you were with us. Just as well, perhaps. We might be tempted to beat up Buckingham Palace. <laughs> <laughs> Will you wait here till we get back? Of course. Quite a moment, isn't it? Quite a moment. Tommy, we're off. Now, don't get into any fights this time. Good luck, darling. I'll be back in an hour. Time to start up, sir. Very well. See you later, Bob. Thanks. Let's go. This is a story of courage. It has no end because courage has no end. It is the story of a man made famous by war, yet for whom the war was only an episode in a greater victory. Fought for and won in silence and pain. The victory of a man's own spirit, creating strength and hope out of disaster.